very sad about what happened to Avril Lavigne. Hmm? Oh! Hello, everybody! Welcome to the AMF show! I was just reading the newspaper here, and apparently, some plane dropped a bomb on Avril Lavigne's house. That's pretty sad, but the weird thing is, is that it happened during my last video. That's pretty strange when you think about it, don't you think? Well, anyways, today I'm doing another top 10 list. As many of you were called, me and the Duke did a list of the worst shows to watch on Treehouse. But now, I'm doing a list of the best shows to watch on Treehouse. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the top 10 of the best shows on Treehouse. Oh! Hey, Duke! Hey there, AMF. How's it going? Uh, good. What are you doing here? Well, this is my house after all. Besides, I thought I'd help you. Well, this is your house, so... I just said I that. Guess, I guess, yeah, well, yeah, I guess you can help me a, a second time. Yeah. Oh, and uh, for those of you who are wondering why we're here and not at Hot Cannibal's house, it's because somebody clogged up his toilet. Oh, come on! I had another burger-eating contest! Do you know what those do to me? They go right through me! Whatever. Anyway, shall we get it started? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax. Wait! There's something I must tell you. What is it? Did you know that Everett Levine was killed by a plane bombing attack? Uh, no, I did not. Well, she did, and the weird thing is that it happened during our last video, the top ten of the worst shows that you can watch on Treehouse. Uh, really? I did not know that. Wait, wait, wait. how would you know when our last video was? I mean, I mean, yeah, obviously, but how would you know it happened during the last video? Uh, newspaper. I was reading the newspaper earlier. Hang on. Said the date of the date of the death. If you read it, check it out. Jet plane dropped bomb on Avril Levine's house. Happened on the day AMF and the Duke were reviewing the worst shows on Treehouse. How would they even know that? Hey, we got fans. Alright, shall we get started then? Yes, let's. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is the top 10 of the best shows to watch on Treehouse. Number 10. Mm. Man, that tasted good. Alright, let's get this show underway. 
At number 10 on the list is the Big Comfy Couch. Oh yes, how can I forget the Big Comfy Couch? There's a show where everyone is a clown. Indeed! Basically, the show teaches you things in every episode. For example, there's an episode where the main character, Lunette, teaches the audience why it's important to have patience. But at the same time, she explains that having patience can be frustrating. However, the reason it's at number 10 on the list is because of the fact that they pretty much do the same thing every episode. Exactly. They talk about a certain something. Lynette goes outside to see her friends. She gets a package from the mailman and then comes back and reads a story about that lesson and then cleans up and goes to bed. I mean, sometimes she'll take a bath or do a dance on her stage. Yeah, she has an auditorium in her house. But other than that, she'll pretty much do the same thing. Another thing is the two cutaways on the show. There's one where her family of dolls run around and do a bunch of crazy stuff. And there's, an there's another with dust bunnies that live underneath the couch who just randomly do stuff. And you can barely understand what they're saying because they talk higher than Elmo. No kidding! I mean, Elmo I can at least understand. But these two, I can't. I love the dust bunnies, by the way. They're so cute. So funny. What? I do! It's hard to take you seriously when you're dressed like a biker, you know. When you say that, and you're, and you're dressed like a biker. I mean. Anyways, on top of that, Lunette has a pretty big couch to store her stuff. I mean... She has pretty much of anything in there! Can you imagine if we had couches like that? Hey! Mm -hmm. A fan! Holy crap! Mm -hmm. What's this? A steak knife! Holy crap! And look! Mm -hmm. A broom! Wow! I wonder what- Oh! I can't believe it! It's a plunger! Oh, yeah, um, I kinda need that. I clogged up your toilet again. <laughs> oh! Anyways, despite some things to make fun of, it's an alright show, so stay tuned. We have nine more to go. Number nine. At number nine on the list is Miss Spider. Yes, I never watched the show, but I have read the books, and from what I got from the books is that it's about a yellow spider who marries an orange spider in one book and gets a car in another book. But I'm sure the show is about something completely different. It's been a while since I've watched this show, but it's pretty good. It also gives hidden lessons that's pretty easy to understand. But what I don't get is that Miss Spider is three times bigger than Mr. Spider! What's up with that? Well, if she's anything like Fiona and from Shrek, she will marry a midget. But Fiona and Farquaad never got married. I know, I just couldn't think of a good joke. Don't worry, Duke. We'll give you fair jokes. Number eight. At number eight on the list, is Mr. Maker. Mr. Who? Mr. Maker. Never heard of it. Well, go watch an episode and let me know what you think. Oh no. Last time that happened, I watched a show about tiny people helping normal-sized kids. Don't worry, Mr. Maker is nothing like Team of Azumi. Besides, this is the best top ten of the shows that you can watch on Treehouse. Not the worst shows! That is true. All right, I'll be back. Well, what did you think? Basically, the show is a mix between Pee Wee's Playhouse and Art Attack. What do you mean? Well, he makes arts and crafts, just like the guy from Art Attack, but at the same time, he's a little crazy like Pee Wee from Pee Wee's Playhouse. What's Pee-wee's Playhouse? 
Go and watch an episode. Do I have to? I watch two shows for you. It's the very least you can do. Okay, Dr. Zeus. I'll be right back. What did you think? What the f did I just watch? It's a show about a grown up man that's about in his mid 30s wearing a red bow tie and a gray business suit that runs around and jumps around like a f***ing five year old that lives in a f***ing house filled with talking f***ing everything. This show is just like Dora the f***ing Explorer, but worse. The show even has a talking f***ing floor for sakes. How can the people let a show like this go on air? I mean, why? Why would the producers make a show like that? Shows like that make me want to hate myself and slam more! AMF, are you okay? I'll be fine. I just want to apologize for my breakdown. It was really immature and childish. It's just that I go crazy when I see shows like that, including Barry's Playhouse. Oh, what will the producers on? Oh. Crack pot meth. Dude, come. Or will they smoke it all through while eating mushrooms? This show is so fucked up that it's not even funny. It's furthermore. Are you okay now? Yeah. It's just... Ferris Playhouse is so f***ed up! It's not even funny! Screw up my childhood, will you? Well, I can tell you one thing! You can go suck on your dogs! <sighs> How are you now? I don't even know why I had an outburst. I don't even know why I'm wearing this. Because of Pee Wee's Playhouse? Pee Wee's Playhouse! Ah, so, what is wrong with shows today? I mean, come on! You can make. Enough! We're not doing this a fourth time. Thanks, I needed that. Just focus on Mr. Maker. Okay. All right. This is the best shows anyway. But I just got this one thing to say. Dora, you are no longer the second worst show that I have ever seen. What? I'm sorry I brought that show up. Now talk about Mr. Maker. Or I'll give you another mohawk! Off of me! Alright, fine. Don't take it off. I wasn't gonna. Anyways. So, uh. Back to Mr. Maker. The show is pretty much what the Duke said. It's a mix between Art Attack and. That other show! Mr. Maker makes arts and crafts. Like the guy from Art Attack. And at the same time, he's crazy like... Mr. You-Know-Who from You-Know-What! He teaches kids how to be good with art and all that stuff. I loved watching it, and I still do. But ever since I watched You-Know-What, I think I love it less. However, the good thing is... Mr. Maker is less crazy than Peewee. Peewee! Shut up! Next one. Number seven. At number seven on the list is Fresh Beat Band. 
the show that teaches you about certain things through certain songs. Isn't that right, Duke? 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 Duke! What? Huh? Did you even hear a word I just said? Sorry, I was distracted. I mean, I never thought I'd say this about a kid's show, but those girls are kind of hot. I mean, look at them. Duke? Yeah. Focus! Fine. Anyways, Crush Beat Band is a show about teenagers who go to music school and actually get excited about it. I mean, I guess the show's trying to teach you how fun school can be, but it's a little silly. Also, it's kind of annoying that they sing about almost everything. But they aren't like Wonder Pets or Third and Bird. Thank God! True that. But they try to get us excited about school. Yeah, like that's gonna happen. Looks like it is possible. I guess so. So anyways, Fresh Beat Band does encourage you to not give up and always try your best and have fun. True. However, the reason why it's so low on the list is for one reason. Don't tell me it's because you think the characters are idiots. No, I enjoy people's stupidity. The reason why they're so low is because their show is for kids. And the show itself is about kids in high school that sing. Does that sound like something familiar and painful? You better not be talking about Glee. No. I'm talking about a movie. Grease? No. Another movie. An annoying movie. Grease 2? Close. But try a little harder. Oh no. You don't mean. Yup. High School Musical! Oh my gosh, that movie is just awful. It is so bad that no internet critic will review it. Because they are afraid that they'll commit suicide. And I don't blame them! No kidding, and the thing is, the song, We're All In This Together, is their best known song. It's so annoying that it can make your ears bleed. Anyways, it's an alright show. With hot girls. Do I have to smack you again, Duke? That's true. <laughs> number six. And number six is Handy Mandy. I actually find the show pretty sad. How come? Mandy's closest friends are his tools. I mean, that's pretty sad when you think about it. Yeah. You know, you're right. It is! While watching this show, Mandy has no other close friends but his talking and alive tools. Which is pretty sad. But at the same time, it does teach you how to fix stuff, and teaches you how to speak Spanish. And it's a less annoying than Dora. But on that show, the only things that don't talk in real life, that do talk on the show, are the tools. True. Another thing is that maybe he's close with his human friends. But I don't know, because I haven't watched the show in ages. Yeah, also his tools do all the work while Manny sits back and watches. Man, I wish I had tools like that. Yeah! That would be awesome! Screwdriver, fix my toilets! And while you're at it, get us some pop. Yeah! Get back and look alive! Let's get him!
Boom! <laughs> Anyways, this show is good for your kids. So check it out if you haven't already. We recommend it. Number five. At number five on the list is the Octonaut. Hey, I'm up. What are you doing? Taking off my jacket. It's so f***ing hot in here. Well, you're the one who's struggling like a biker when it's 100 degrees out. Well, at first I could handle it, but now it feels like it's gotten even hotter in here. It's an apartment with only one window. How cool did you think it was going to be? Well, nothing like my house, that's for sure. Ugh. Anyways, as I was saying... Number five on the list is the Octonauts. Based on what I've seen, it's a show about a team of animals who explore the underwater world. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I actually like watching this show. It's actually a show that teaches you about something. And you even enjoy watching it. It teaches you about certain sea creatures that live in the sea. Including sea creatures that I didn't even know myself, like the giant spider crab. It would be funny if they did this with a great white shark. And on the right, if you look, you'll see the great white shark. Hey, I heard Steven Spielberg loves great white sharks. Yeah, it would be great if he made a movie about a giant shark that eats people. If he does, let's hope he doesn't make unnecessary sequels. They already did a Great White Shark episode. Put a sock in it. Anyways, this show is entertaining and educational. Exactly what kids should be watching. Like, other shows that I know. Next. Number four. At number four on the list is Max and Ruby. Max's boobies? No! Max and Ruby! You pervert! Hey, I'm not the one who hits on a girl by saying, I'm a man, you're a woman, and together we make babies. Hey, at least she got more interested in me. Plus, she tried getting me back, but her plan backfired when I finished to what she was about to say. Okay, we're not talking about sex moments, we're talking about kids shows. Okay. Fine. Anyways, Max and Ruby is about two siblings that are rabbits and live in a house together. Alone. With no parents. And the older sister, who is about seven years old, who takes care of her three-year-old brother, Max. Wait, wait, wait. They are minors and they live alone? Yes. You heard right. They live alone, and they're not even ten years old. What happened to their parents? It's a nice day for a walk, isn't it, Winston? Indeed it is, Mary. I'm glad I was able to get out of the house. Meh. What's up, Doc? Oh, my! Who are you, and why are you running around naked? Meh. I'm a rabbit, Doc. Rabbits are supposed to be naked. And why are you wearing clothes? Because in this world, rabbits wear clothes. Listen, I gotta go. I'm being hunted by someone. Is he gone? Yes, dear. The nudist is gone. Good day to you, sir. What are you up to on this fine day? I'm hunting rabbits. And now I got two for the price of one. <laughs> Meh. Better them than me. No one knows. Oh. Well, anyways. I haven't seen it, but... From what AMF tells me, it's a good show for your kids to watch. Indeed. So check it out. Plus, even though Ruby is a seven-year-old and takes care of her brother, she is really stupid when it comes to common sense. Max, however, he might not say very much, 
and only says one word in every episode. But he's a lot smarter than his sister Ruby. By solving problems that Ruby is too stupid to figure out. Wait, you're not saying girls are stupid, are you? What? Wait, what? No! I never said that! There are a lot of girls that are smart. But there are some that can be pretty stupid when it comes to common sense. Like Ruby, for example. What makes you think I said that? I never said you said that. I was just asking if you were implying you were saying that. No. Well, good, because... So. Not too many girls are stupid. <clears throat> with the exception of cowgirl. But... <laughs> you got that right. Yeah, but anyways, yes, most girls are not stupid, but you say Ruby is, and explain to me how she is stupid. Well, you might have to watch an episode and find out. Alright. But just out of curiosity, she's not as dumb as Hatch with Starfish, is she? No, no, nowhere near, thank God. Oh, good, because she must be smarter than Patrick if she's... Eight years old and is a guardian to her brother. Actually, Patrick, she's seven. Still, seven years old. Patrick is like. Well. <laughs> he, he's a young, I meant he's a like young. That. No, I meant he's a young adult. And. What would the adoption agency say to him if he were to adopt a kid? Get the. Mm. Out of this building, that's what. <laughs> you got that right. Number three. Our number three on the list is our number three on the list. Oh, oh, Our number three so, on the list. Oh, you're so pretty. Yeah, yeah. I've been single for two years, so why not? Our number three yeah, on the list. Yeah, yeah. You can even hang out with my friend AMF. Oh yeah, you want to know what the AMF stands for? Oh, oh, oh. Huh? What time did you go to sleep last night? 4.30. 4.30? Well, actually, it was 9 o'clock, but I got up in the middle of the night to watch a show, so... Unbelievable. Do you have any re idea that we're recording right now? Oh. Wait, you were recording me sleeping? Um, yeah. What's well, creepy? You have a girlfriend for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, Dirt. wise guy, huh? Hey! Focus on the video! Fine. Anyways. Pee Wee's Playhouse. Why are you you want to kill you? Don't! Oh, that's right. Sorry about that, folks. <sighs> Just say what number three is. Alright. Our number three on the list is Bubble Guppies. Otherwise known as the show with Merkids and a Fish Teacher. Yes. The Octonaut. Like the Octonauts, Bubble Guppies takes place underwater. This show teaches kids about different things at every episode. And the most good thing about this show is there are only th three songs in every episode, but the sh songs are pretty good. For example, they teach you about how dinosaurs used to rule the earth and that there are bones inside your body. And everything you can think of. This is a very good kids show to watch. Shows that kids SHOULD be watching! Yeah, it's alright. Can you imagine if they had a crossover with the Octonauts? Oh my! Hmm. Hmm. Mr. Cooper, what is that? Why, I don't know! Hey, what kind of sea creature are you? Holy crap, I'm talking fish! Quickly, let's capture it and make millions! Aye aye, Captain! Yeah, that would be cool! Anyways, this is why we put them at number three on the list. So stay tuned. There are two more shows to come. Number two. 
At number two on the list is the Berestein Bears. Oh, yes. I remember that show. I read almost all of their books, too. Yeah, but what can we say? This show is awesome! No kidding. It has a lot of different stories that teach you stuff. Whether it's about honesty, privacy, stage fright, you name it. Yes. However, the weird thing is that the characters are all grizzly bears. With the exception of their pets. It, kind of, it also kind of begs the question, if bears are humans in this world, does that mean humans are bears? I never thought of that! Interesting. Hmm. Oh, a human! Quick, let's shoot it! Nice shooting, old chump! Yes, you too, old pal. Another thing that bothers me is the names of the main characters. For example, you got Mama, you got Papa, Brother, and Sister. Yeah, and I heard Brother Bear was originally called Small Bear, but they changed his name when his sister was born. Can you imagine if our parents did that? Oh my god, I hate to imagine that. I am off! Hmm? I'm having another baby! So your name will now be called Child One! But why? Because my baby's gonna be called Child Two! See what I mean? Bottom line, Berenstain Bears is an alright show. Definitely worth the number two spot. True. However, there's a show that's even better. So check it out. We are almost done. Hiya hee, maya hoo, maya ha, maya ha ha. Pee Wee's Playhouse. Fuck that you fuck! What the you fuck that bitch you do? Number one. At number one on the list is. Wait, can I start off this time? Fine. And number 10 on the list is the crazy clown world that is the big comfy couch. And number 9 is the fun spider, Miss Spider. And number 8 is Pee Wee's less crazy cousin, Mr. Maker. Don't you dare mention that name! What do you have against Mr. Maker? No, not Mr. Maker! Mr. You Know Who! I didn't say Lord Voldemort's name. What? I didn't say Lord Voldemort's name. Man, are you deaf? No, not that name! Um, never mind. At number seven is the band with hot girls, the Fresh Beat Band. At number six is the guy whose friends are tools, and I mean that literally, Andy Manny. At number five is the underwater team, Known as the Octonauts. And number four is the cute brother and sister, Max and Ruby. And number three is the bubbly characters, Bubble Guppies. And number two is the family of bears called the Bernstein Bears. And at number one is... Drumroll, please. Blue's Clues! The show that's basically... A mystery guessing show where the human character Steve tries to figure out what his dog Blue is saying. And along the way, they run into their friends who are inanimate objects. But don't worry, it's not like Dora the Explorer or, you know, the other show that will not be mentioned in front of Ray Math. Also, another thing to note is that Blue is a female dog, not a male dog. Yeah, for a couple of episodes I thought Blue was a guy. Me too! Well now we know how the Nostalgia Critic felt when he reviewed Care Bears in Wonderland. Also, one thing that bothers me about this show is that the show is partly cartoon and partly real people. Yeah. The only real people I remember that aren't cartoons are Steve, Steve's grandma, Blue's friend Magento's owner, Steve's younger brother slash replacement, yeah he got replaced, more on that later, and the kids who mail Steve and Blue letters. Other than that, there aren't any real-life humans. Yeah, 
I wonder how that special effects work. Anyways, what happened to Steve there, Duke? Well, on the show, he went to college, but in real life, the actor who played him wanted to explore more opportunities. I remember watching the show one day and seeing Joe for the first time. I then asked the question, where's Steve? Now you know how people who watched The Price is Right felt when they saw that Drew Carey took over for Bob Parker. Bob Barker. Really? I kept on being told it was Bob Parker. By who? A, a few friends of mine. Uh, either they don't know his real name, or they are trying to screw you over. I think they were trying to screw me over. Yeah. Anyways, unlike Drew Carey, I don't think anyone has a problem with Joe. Anyways, something that I like about the show is the fact that people can jump into paintings, computers, books, you name it. They can jump into it, but they call it skidooing. Imagine if people could do that in real life. Yeah, in fact, let me try it right now. Wait, what? Da, 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 da. Hey, AMF, look! I'm inside the computer! Holy crap, that's amazing, Duke! I'm even turning into my computer self. I think I'm going to put you in the gay porn channel. Wait, what? No! No, don't! No, don't! Ah! Oh my gosh! There's so much white stuff everywhere! Oh! It's horrific! Oh! Enjoy the gay porn channel, Duke. Go f yourself. I'm sure there were a lot of guys doing that too. Uh -oh. ah! I thought twice. I knew you were gonna do that. Did you know I'm gonna use your coat to? Oh, you it up? wouldn't dare! No! No! God damn it, Duke! Ah. Oh my. God! This costed me 200 bucks! Well, you know, how much is it going to cost you for uh, the surgery? What surgery? For your bruised balls. <laughs> you little. Oh! <laughs> 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 Welcome back to the show, everybody. We like to apologize for our brawl that we had. Yeah, apologize to you, not apologize to each other, though. There's nothing to be apologized about. Anyways, Blue's Clues is an awesome show. It was definitely my favorite when I was a kid, and I hope it's your favorite, too. Well, there you have it. This has been the top 10 best shows to watch on Treehouse. And thanks for joining me again, Duke, even though we had some bumps in the road. Yeah, well, I have fun. Anyways, let's have the Fresh Beat Band play us out.
the songs that we hate. So what do you think we're doing? I think you're doing perfectly fine. Oh yeah? How does that... How do you explain this? The extension cord leading from my apartment to your little computer over there. Yeah! Well, Try to explain that. Well, I can't explain that. Go ahead. That here clogged my toilet. What? You heard me.